Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel, friends and guests. If you enjoy today's presentation, I do hope that you'll stick around for more content. Well, it's that time of year again. Jingle bells, turkey, ham, deep fried mice, all of those wonderful holiday things that make the holiday season so great. And oh Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree. That's a huge piece of the holiday puzzle. So, is it possible to have a real cat not a fake cat, <laughs> but a real cat and a real tree. Yes, it is. Of course it is. But there are some rules involved. A heaping, helping scoop of responsibility is in order. Cats are curious creatures, and a Christmas tree is an obvious attention getter. Many cats are obsessed with trying to figure it all out. Why? Well, at the core of it all is the rarity. Cats can get used to almost anything if they see it enough, smell it enough. You could have a unicorn in the middle of your living room, but if it's there all the time, then your cat will get used to it. Come to expect it, in fact. A Christmas tree, simply stated, it's just not there long enough for it to become a familiar household staple. At the very top end of things, what are we talking about here? A Christmas tree, uh, what, it's up about 50 days. At the short end of it, perhaps 10 a few weeks out of 365 days just is not long enough for the tree to become something of normalcy, something that doesn't deserve investigation. And a Christmas tree, well, that there's plenty to investigate right there for any cat. The Christmas tree, well, that's a new chance to do stuff, right? That's really it. A new chance to take a swipe at those shiny ornaments, a new chance to climb, a new chance to sniff around at new things. I mean, we're talking about a real tree in this video. Real trees? Well, what do cats like to do to real trees in the great outdoors? Climb and just get downright silly. Climbing, hiding, scratching, urine marking. The possibilities are almost endless. The Christmas tree is probably the best cat toy. Hmm. And that can spell bad news for you. So, today's objective will involve giving you a few tips and helping you to have a wonderful holiday season and a very Merry Christmas without having to sacrifice your beloved real Christmas tree simply because you have a real cat and are a loving cat owner. Let's begin with the foundation of the tree itself, the base of the tree. It needs to be sturdy, very difficult to tip over. Your tree, if possible, needs to be able to mimic the integrity of a tree in the wild. That's hard, but hold on just a second, bear with me. <laughs> this is why your tree must be secured, heavy base, complete with fasteners. The use of ties, clear fishing line is the best, can help you to anchor your tree while also concealing these safety measures from plain view. Wherever you decide to put your tree, be sure it can be tied to something, secure it to something. And just in case your cat wants to, let's say, have a go, what's worse than your cat jumping on the tree? Your cat bringing it all down without a matter of seconds, that's what's worse. Another suggestion, place the tree as far away from your cat's play area as possible as far away from an existing perch or scratching post. You don't want your cat to just conclude that your Christmas tree is a deliberate plaything designed for them. A bit earlier, I said that a tree was just a new chance to take a swipe at those shiny ornaments. It's true, and that's why it's vital that you place all glass ornaments, sharp ornaments, and ornament hooks away from your cat's, well, downright plain sight. That swipe, born out of curiosity, could cause injury puncture wounds to the paws, and then the risk of curious chewing and even consumption of tiny pieces, especially if the ornaments were to fall and break. Keep those bottom branches in terms of ornaments rather plain and basic, items that are less likely to spark curiosity and far less problematic if direct contact is indeed made. What about those little red plastic apples, those little plastic red apples? That would be my advice, one of the most vintage Christmas tree ornaments in history, in my opinion. Compared to many others, those are fairly safe and they're quite plain from a visual standpoint. So, 
consider placing those or something similar on those bottom branches. Now, let's talk about water. After all, we're dealing with a live tree here. It's critical that you keep your cat away from the water and from getting to the tree water altogether. Well, why is this so important? Because there's a good chance the water is really nothing more than a bowl of chemicals meant to keep the tree green and thriving. It's not your run-of-the-mill water. I advise you to cover the entire base of your tree. A large tree skirt should do the trick. Anything to keep your cat from making direct contact and just getting too curious. And rounding things out today, let's focus on some of the typical basics when it comes to Christmas tree safety. Not so much of uh, the tree this time, but rather Christmas itself. <laughs> the Christmas gifts and the lights, bows, ribbons, wrapping paper, glitter, you name it. All of those pretty bells and whistles. Keep anything chewable away from your cat. Don't stash any of that stuff directly under the tree. I mentioned this earlier when talking about broken ornaments. If you do have a curious cat, keep it simple when it comes to gift presentation. Additionally, don't wrap food items and keep them under the tree. You might be able to fool a family member as to what's in that box, but your cat will have the final word on this one. Trust and believe. And of course, you can't talk Christmas trees without talking about Christmas tree lights. And unfortunately, you can't talk lights without talking about electrical cords. Talk about chew toys. It really doesn't get much more tempting than a cord. So, do your very best to hide light cords and shield them from being obvious visuals of curiosity. This could take a bit of a trial and error, but please do your very best. Consider wrapping the cords in electrical tape and perhaps a layer of gaffer tape over the top of the electrical tape. Anything to supply reinforcement to the cords and visually mask the cords while also protecting your cat, just in case of un unwanted direct contact of the biting variety. And finally, this could be the biggest safety tip of all. If you're concerned, what if, what if none of the above is working out? If you're concerned that none of the above is enough, if you're concerned that your cat will simply become too curious, find a way, if possible, to keep your cat out of the area altogether. If it's possible, keep your cat in another room or keep the tree in another room, whichever, whatever. Either that or place some type of obvious yet festive barrier in front of the tree. Simply make it so that even the curious, the most curious of cats, won't be able to physically touch the tree, touch the presents, touch the ornaments, touch the cords. You know your layout. You know your home. If you can come up with a way to separate your cat from the tree, while maintaining the visual of a well-decorated and Christmassy room, hey, work your magic. Even placing something unpleasant on the floor near the tree, such as a carpet runner, this could be enough to turn your cat off. If all else fails, just get one of those nutcracker guys to stand guard. I'm pretty sure those things come to life at night anyway. <laughs> so, as a whole, one of the best things you can do, well, you can treat your tree like that elephant in the room. It's there, you see it, but just ignore it. How you personally respond to the tree could potentially shape your cat's response. Now, this isn't a guarantee, but if you keep up the normal routine, just the everyday same old, same old, your cat's curiosity could wane a bit. Ask yourself this, especially if you have a tree-curious cat, how much of it is natural curiosity and how much of it started or happened the moment you introduce your cat to the tree, did you pick up your cat and say, hey, look, look at this tree? I mean, hey, I get it. I don't blame you if you did. It's fun. But it's also important to avoid planting that seed. Cats are quite keen and can easily tell when something is important to us, something is important to you. If you make a big deal about the Christmas tree and all those shiny things, your cat will too. Just keep that in mind in addition to everything else. Well, I personally need to get back to the North Pole and finish up my task for the day. It's hard work getting those reindeer to run on a treadmill and stay in shape. But I'm in charge and I'm committed to making sure they're in perfect shape for the big night. Fitness is key. You know, these gifts don't just appear. It takes a team effort. To the viewers of Senior Cat Wellness, your thoughts on this topic? Additional tips for maintaining a real Christmas tree? during the holiday season while also having a very real and very curious cat? Hmm. The comment section. As always, it's all yours. And until next time, I do thank you so very much for taking some time out of your very busy day to join me right here at Senior Cat Wellness. 
Did you like what you heard today? If you did, please feel free to like and share this video and subscribe to the channel. And until next time, vacuum up those pesky pine needles. And we'll talk to you later.